Hello, I am Jacob Mertens and I am a, an occupational therapy fieldwork student at the American Stroke Foundation and I'm doing my presentation over sleep. So today we'll kind of go over what sleep is, the different stages of sleep, how it affects your health, and then in with some helpful tips to improve sleep. So why sleep? So the reason I chose my topic to be over sleep is because of how essential it is. I think it tends to get overlooked and put on the back burner in regard to living a healthy life, which is weird to me because we spend around one third of our lives doing it. I also came across research that suggested that a very small percentage of stroke survivors are asked about sleep after having their stroke. Um, sleep has an effect on almost all of our systems. That includes brain, heart, lungs, metabolism, immune functions, and mood. And sleep is important because it's when our brains and our bodies do a lot of recovery for um, all the energy they expend throughout the day. So sleep maintains the pathways in our brains, which allows us to learn, create memories, and have attention throughout the day. Um, sleep also has an effect on decreasing the risk of additional strokes. So I thought it was a very important topic to discuss. So what are some benefits for stroke survivors? So the first one is neuroplasticity. So neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to adapt and rewire itself, allowing healthy areas of the brain to take over functions that have been impacted by damage because of the stroke. So this is something that is um, kind of done while sleeping. Neuroplasticity, a large portion of it, takes effect while we are sleeping. So while we are sleeping, our brains are actively trying to rewire around those damaged parts and find new pathways. Um, another benefit is learning and memory. So loss of sleep makes it very difficult to process new information and then remember it in the future. Um, so getting more sleep uh, conversely would mean that you would improve your ability to take in information and then recall it later. As I mentioned in the previous slide, this sleep decreases our risk for an additional stroke. So good sleep is really important for your heart health and for maintaining healthy blood pressure. Continuous loss of sleep is associated with higher blood pressure, which is a risk factor in stroke. And the last thing that I thought uh, was important is mental health. So decreased mood and higher incidences of depression were reported by stroke survivors who also reported poor sleep. So sleep is an important part of our emotional and mental health along with our physical and brain health. So I wanted to talk about our sleep-wake cycle. So we have a biological clock in our brains. It's a rhythm that affects our wakefulness and alertness throughout a typical 24-hour day. If you're on a typical schedule, you stay awake during the day and then you sleep at night. And that is because light is a major factor in creating the schedule. Light wakes us up, it tells our brain it's time to be alert, it's time to get going, and then darkness um, has our body, our brain create melatonin, which causes us to become sleepy. Um, and why would this be important? I think about bright lights, we're on our phone right before bed, we're doing something and we want to be winding down for the day, but we're in a very bright environment that can have very negative effects on our sleep and can set off your schedule. And as we'll talk later, it's very important to have a strong sleep routine. So sleep is not something that we just do and we just black out and we stay in one state. We're not lying there doing nothing. Um, we're going through these different stages throughout the night. And we cycle through these different stages. They're not all the same, but we'll talk about them here. The first stage being um, 
when we first begin dozing off. And this is our body prepping itself for the other sleep stages, engaging itself and readying itself for sleep. This is usually about one to seven minutes, and it's not typically repeated if you stay asleep the entire time. Um, which once we are we spend the one to seven minutes in this stage, we move on to stage two, which is light sleep. So our body temperature starts to drop, our heart rate and breathing start to slow, and then muscles start to relax. And with that, we have a little bit less um, brain activity, which segues us into stage three, which is deep sleep. Um, this is our restorative sleep. This is our restorative sleep for our body and our brain. Um, when they do a lot of repairing, especially for the body. And then after a stage of deep sleep, we move into REM sleep. And this is when our brain activity, you see a rise in that. So we start to have vivid dreams. These are the ones you remember um, the night before. If you're you wake up and you recall a dream and just you can just see it so perfectly this is when that happens and rem sleep is very important because this is when our brain does a lot of its um, maintenance and cognitive function for memory learning and creativity um, these stages get longer the longer you stay asleep at least for rem you can see um, with each stage each cycle on that chart it gets a little bit longer as the night progresses if you wake up a lot during the night or you have disruptions, um, you don't properly cycle through these stages, which means you miss a lot of the possible benefits. Not getting enough of that deep sleep and REM sleep can have really negative effects on our thinking and our emotional health as well as our physical health. So how much sleep do we need? This is kind of like when people say, Everyone needs eight glasses of water a day. We think eight hours of sleep today, but that's not necessarily true. Um, sleep varies from person to person. So an adult typically needs somewhere between seven to nine hours of good quality sleep to reach that optimal level of functioning. Um, you are the expert in how much sleep you need. And we do this by monitoring how you feel. Um, you can tell if you are getting enough sleep by monitoring if you're tired, if you're drowsy, um, you just kind of feel how you are throughout the day. And if you are feeling like this and you feel like you need a lot of naps, there's a good chance that you are not getting all of those cycles and getting enough quality sleep. So here are some signs that you might need to increase your um, the sleep you're getting. So. The first one um, is fatigue. So you're feeling tired, you're feeling sleepy. Uh, fatigue is common after a stroke, but this can be severely exacerbated if you are not getting enough sleep. This can be either physical or mental. So without that restorative period at night, you feel tired when you're trying to think and when you're trying to move your body. Um, in the bottom left there, I have slow thinking or brain fog. Since we've talked about the effects of taking in new information and processing, thinking and decision making can feel like it's slower and harder to do. It makes it takes a little bit longer to process new information or anything that you're trying to do that day. Um, lower attention span. So it's harder to focus. It's harder to maintain attention to a task, to a conversation, to really anything you're trying to do. And then we have um, in the bottom right there, anxiety and depression. So there's a lot of mood changes if you're not getting enough sleep. Um, one of the main ones is irritability, uh, quick to anger. So little things that might not normally bother you are suddenly quick to make you very mad. Um, you're feeling more anxious. You feel like, you know, some depressive, some depressive symptoms. This could be signs that you need more sleep. And this is because uh, these mood changes are affected by the area of our brain that is responsible for emotional regulation. This is your amygdala. Um, and it gets very overwhelmed when it's deprived of sleep. And this can cause heightened responses to things that may not normally get to you. And now they're really pushing your buttons and it just needs to um, see a little bit more sleep to kind of refresh itself and quit feeling so overwhelmed. 
Okay, so some sleep tips. The first one I have is follow a schedule. So that sleep-wake cycle we talked about comes into play here. Going to bed and waking up at the same time every day is a great practice for consistent sleep and readying your body for the same time. We, we are creatures of habit. Having that habit of sleep and that schedule um, increases your ability to stay asleep and get good sleep. I have exercise on there. So physical exercise is great for our bodies and it will also help to make sure you are appropriately, appropriately tired at the end of your day and help you stay asleep at night. Um, I have limit light and noise. So if it's too bright in your room, you know, um, we talked about that our, the effect of light in our body is too bright and we might feel more alert, makes it harder to stay asleep. So you could try things like curtains, um, blackout curtains, um, sleeping masks, things like that. And then noise. So if you live in a noisy area or noisy environment, you can find ways to limit sudden noises that might wake you up. Um, a lot of people are fans of white noises from fans. Um, your phone has sounds. I've recently tried green noise, which is sort of a mix between white noise and um, nature sounds. And then we have, I have no phone or TV. And this is because um, you should avoid your devices at least 30 minutes prior to your bedtime. There's blue light from TVs, computers, phones, things like that interrupts the hormone that makes us tired uh, that we mentioned earlier, which can have bad effects for your whole sleep cycle. On there, I also have keep it cool. So the best temperature for an adult is around 65 degrees, um, but that changes with age. So it actually ranges from about 60 to 72 for our more elderly population you're looking at more towards 70 to 74 degrees being recommended and the last one i have there is journaling and so keeping track of your mood how much you sleep the quality and any disturbances can be a great start for making a change this goes into our self-monitoring category and becoming your own expert and it helps you to identify what might be having a negative effect on you throughout the week or weeks and gives you a target on what you can change to make sure that you're getting better sleep. So what are my main takeaways? So my main takeaways, if you're going to get anything from this presentation is to respect sleep. So sleep is essential for your health. Sleep is um, important for physical and mental health, and it's the foundation for cognitive clarity. It isn't something that you can quote, do when you're dead. I heard that a lot when I was young and it's much better to have it so we can be um, happier while alive. So sleep has a profound effects on our abilities to do the things that we want and need to do, which is a foundation of occupational therapy. And it should be treated with the same attention and respect that we treat diet and exercise for health. Um, so schedule and routine. So a habit and routine is really important for sleep. Schedule where your bedtime and wake up time are about the same every day will help you get more and better sleep. And this is a real mindset. It makes it much easier to form a healthy sleep routine when you go in really wanting it. Setting an alarm to remind yourself to start your bedtime routine at the same time every night is a good way to make sure that we're staying on track and adhering to this schedule. And start by identifying the things that disturb your sleep and work to ease those things. So you know, for me, I had to start locking my cats out. I love having my cats around, but they are monsters and love to fight on top of me at three in the morning. So we had to have a separation at night. Um, sleep environment, we talked about limiting light, limiting noises, um, keeping it cool, and creating sort of a cave-like environment. That's how you're going to get your best sleep. And then the last one is no blue light, at least 30 minutes before bed. I know a lot of people, including myself, are guilty of wanting to scroll through our phones while we're in bed and kind of winding down, but it's actually counterintuitive and counterproductive towards achieving good sleep. All right, and that's my presentation. Thank you very much for listening and watching.